All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. Recording in progress. We are on the record in case 24 CRI 238, caption State of Ohio versus Taylor Desiree Marvin Brown. Four. Purposes of a bond setting on a complaint that was filed earlier today. The defendant is present. We're conducting this hearing by video, appearing on behalf of the State of Ohio's prosecuting attorney, Christopher Tunnell. Uh, Mr. Marvin Brown, do you have any objection to the court conducting this hearing by video? No. Did you get a copy of the complaint that was filed? Yes, ma'am. The court has to go over that with you. Um, there's two counts in the complaint. The first count is endangering children, a felony of the second degree. It reads on or about August 17th, 2024 in Ashton County, Ohio. Taylor Desiree Marvin Brown did administer corporal punishment or other physical disciplinary measure or physically restrain the child in a cruel manner or for a prolonged period, which punishment, discipline, or restraint was excessive under the circumstances and created a substantial risk of serious physical harm to DM, 11-4-2017. Uh, a child under 18 years of age, 11-4-2017, in violation of revised code section 2919-22-B3, 2919-22-E3, endangering children, a felony of the second degree. And it reads, furthermore, the violation resulted in serious physical harm to DM, 11-4-2017. Do you understand the charge and what they're alleging in count one? Uh, yes. Count two is obstructing justice, a felony of the third degree. It reads on or about August 17th, 2024 in Ashland County, Ohio. Taylor Desiree Marvin Brown did with purpose to hinder the discovery, apprehension, prosecution, conviction, or punishment of another for a crime or to assist another to benefit from the commission of a crime, communicate false information to any person in violation of Ohio Revised Code Section 2921-32A5, 2921-32C4, obstructing justice, a felony of the third degree, reads furthermore, and the crime committed by the person aided was aggravated murder, murder, or a felony of the first or second degree, and or the act committed by the child aided would have been one of those offenses if committed by an adult and the offender knew or had reason to believe the crime committed by the person aided was one of those offenses, and or that the act committed by the child aided would have been one of those offenses if committed by an adult. Uh, do you understand what they are alleging uh, in the charge in count two? Yes. You have certain rights in this matter. First, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say during the course of this hearing could be used against you at future hearings. You have the right to have an attorney, and you have the right to a court-appointed attorney if you cannot afford to hire one and if you qualify. There's a $25 fee for court-appointed counsel. You have the right to have a preliminary hearing. That's a probable cause hearing since you are charged by complaint. And you have the right to have a jury trial and to have the state prove your guilt as to the charges beyond a reasonable doubt to all 12 jurors. Do you understand those rights as I've explained them to you? Yes. Did you want to be represented by an attorney? No, I, no. Okay. We're going to do uh, the bond setting today regardless, um, but we can have an attorney for you at the next hearing if you want to be represented by somebody. I, I just okay. need to know my bond, please. Okay, we're going to do bond today regardless. All right. You don't want to be represented by an attorney? No. Okay. I don't know. Not. It's up to you, so you don't have to have an attorney, but I can appoint I've somebody if you want to. I've done this before. Um, Sorry. No. You don't want an attorney? No. Okay. No, ma'am. The court can always reconsider that in the future if you change your mind. Um, we are going to uh, address the matter of bond then. Attorney Tanel, the state's position on bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the court should be advised that uh, on Saturday, August 17th, um, law enforcement was uh, summoned to the Savannah area, reference a six-year-old with a dog bite. Uh, subsequent investigation um, revealed that uh, this defendant uh, and Angelina Williams, who is his significant other, uh, along with uh, Robert Mikowski, whose residence it is in Savannah, 
Miss Williams had had her children, uh, the six-year-old and his sister, who's roughly the same age, uh, there at the residence for a week or maybe two weeks uh, prior to Saturday. On this particular occasion, um, Angelina, uh, with the assistance, direct assistance of this defendant, uh, was administering um, a restraint to the six-year-old as a form of punishment. Uh, as law enforcement understands it, this defendant uh, and Angelina were handcuffing uh, the six-year-old, uh, both uh, hands and feet, and then perhaps preparing to use a rope to tie the child to the chair uh, when the child ended up on the floor, and at which point when the child ended up restrained on the floor, uh, the pit bull that resides in the house belonging to uh, Robert attacked the child by uh, biting the child's neck um, the adults in the house then had to uh, take measures to force the dog to release the child. Uh, it's law enforcement's understanding uh, that this particular restraint technique was being administered on this occasion uh, as a form of discipline of, after some uh, disagreement of the child not picking up dog excrement behind the house. Uh, uh, evidently, uh, both children uh, have been, uh, while in the house, subjected to this particular form of discipline previously. Uh, this defendant uh, was holding the child's shoulders down in the chair so that the child would remain still uh, as these were being applied. Um, when law enforcement arrived after uh, the squad left to provide treatment to the child, uh, who, by way of Mansfield, was at Akron Children's receiving treatment for severe lacerations to his neck. Uh, this defendant immediately began lying uh, about what happened uh, and continued to lie throughout the uh, course of the investigation. The defendant uh, has no prior uh, criminal history that the uh, state can find. Um, in addition to the standard conditions, we would ask no contact with DM, the victim in this matter, his sister, their custodian, the children's custodian, uh, or any minor. No contact with co-defendants. And we would ask that bond be set at 250,000 cash or surety. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Marvin Brown, if you would like to say something regarding what the court should order for bond, you may. I'll just remind you, you don't have to because you have the right to remain silent. Is there anything you want to say today just regarding what the court should order for bond? Uh, I, 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 I can't believe it's that much. I didn't even do it. No. Okay. All right. The court's going to order bond as follows. To be released, you'll have to post two bonds. The first is a personal recognizance bond. That's your written promise with the court to appear at all future hearings in the case. If you fail to appear, you could be charged with a separate felony offense for failing to appear. The second would be a surety bond, a bond secured by real estate or the deposit of cash in the amount of $250,000. Conditions of bond are that you not leave the state of Ohio without obtaining written permission from the court. Keep the court informed of your current address and telephone number at all times. Appear at all future hearings in the case. You need to follow and obey all laws of the state of Ohio and orders of the court. Do not use, consume, or possess any drugs of abuse or alcohol and be subject to random drug and alcohol testing. You can't use products containing THC while you're on bond. Uh, after you post bond, you need to report to the court's bailiffs, whose office is located across from the clerk of courts. They'll get you enrolled in the court's drug testing and bond program. Other conditions are that you have no contact with the alleged victim in the case, his sister or his uh, custodian, that you have no contact with minors, and that you have no contact 
So uh, I with the co-defendants Angelina Williams or Robert Mahalski. So if I get out, I won't be able to see my two girls. Is that what you're saying? I can't see any kids, like period, like my two girls? Correct. Um, we need to set another hearing here. Court can reconsider the bond order, sir. Um, and if you you let the court know if you want to talk to an attorney about that, or if you want the court to consider you for a court appointed attorney, um, we can do that at any time. Uh, 9.15 on Friday, Attorney Tanel. Yes, ma'am. All right. Your next hearing is Friday at 9.15 a.m. That's the 23rd of August. And will I get a copy of all this? I'm going to put it in writing for you. Yes, sir. Um, and you'll get a copy of bond order. If you want the court to appoint counsel, we can do it that day. Also, if you want a lawyer um, at any time, we can consider you for that. Um, you have the right to represent yourself. You have the right to hire an attorney if you want, but you also have the right to court appoint an attorney to represent you on this case. Do you understand all that? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All, right. all right. We'll see you, uh, everybody, back at 9.15 on Friday. Then anything further, Attorney Snell? No, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We're adjourned then. Recording stopped.